Hello friends and welcome back to Violin Teacher YouTube channel. And I thought this would be a very interesting study for us to do on a regular basis, maybe every Monday or something. But um, you can download in the description a very lengthy etude book by DiBerio, The Violin Method. And it will get you started in reading music. So I wanted to go over every little piece of this book with you. And of course I copied it. Um, it starts out with a table of signs and words employed in the work. Now this is, this DeBerio, I'm going to tell you a little bit about him in the, uh, in your description. So, um, but this is an old book of musical study, so it's withstood the test of time. Um, this particular uh, editor is George Lehman, and it was last published in 1899. So that's a ways away, wasn't it? And um, even the pictures and stuff in this are hand-drawn, so it's pretty interesting. But I, I want to tell you that we have so many good books like this. We have Wolfhart, we have uh, Kaiser, we have uh, Schrodiak. So we have so many good books, and a lot of times, you know, back then we weren't digital, right? So they, hand, they had to hand draw it. And so we want to look at these things carefully so that we really know what the message is. Um, so in the first thing that we'll look at today, uh, it, and I'll, I'll just say, that some of the language and the way they talk is, you know, going to be a little bit, maybe even need into some interpretation. Um, but this, the very first part where it says table of signs and words employed in this work, so uh, basic, or just like basic dynamics. So I don't think, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section. But um, if you see these signs, you'll know what they mean. The up bow and down bow symbol, for example. See these right here? So, uh, the, just the basics. Piano, pianissimo, forte, fortissimo, that's the louds and the softs, or quiets. Mezzo, meaning a middle, medium, medium, mezzo, forte. Crescendo, getting gradually louder. Diminuendo, getting gradually softer. Often these are abbreviated in the music. So these dynamics will help you play more musically. Um, okay, but the purpose of this book should be an introduction to violin playing. And maybe um, dynamics aren't that important when you're first getting started, are they? So uh, the next thing that he gives you are the parts of the violin, and that's kind of really interesting too, isn't it? Shows you where the strings are and what the official names of the uh, parts of the bow and the violin are. So you might want to look, look these over. And the, but I want to give a, more of a focus on these pictures in the next three pages or so. Um, so you'll see the bow grip and how the bow arm functions. So if you could get this in front of you, I would like to just discuss this with you. Um, so this is correct position of the hand and wrist showing the parallel between the axis of the joint and the bow. So I, I just want to say that if, you're, if you hold your bow like this, this isn't a very good depiction. So what the point is is that your wrist should be parallel to the stick. And what it really depicts is something really, really, really uncomfortable. So basically, your wrist should be about, it's, it's should be, you know, parallel to the stick is what it's saying. Now, it's telling you that if it's leaning inward, then that's not right. Okay, so the point isn't hold your fingers up like this, hold your wrist up like this. It's not telling you that. 
it's telling you to look at the angle of the wrist and if it's leaning like this it's not right and if it's pretty much uh, parallel to the stick then it's right okay so that's the point I wanted to make on that if you look at this picture which is really telling you keep this keep this stick as you're playing in the same place no matter whether you're at the frog or the tip of the bow and open and close you know the arm from here when you're in the upper half and then let the elbow raise up when you're approaching the frog now this is what he says here variations in the position of the right arm that's the bow arm in executing a stroke let's not have a stroke over it okay um, so at the shows it at the point of the bow in the middle and at the end the extremes of how the extremes of the bow are indicated in corresponding letters okay the left hand is in the first position yeah the fingers stopping the E string okay so no the left hand is important when you're uh, demonstrating what the bow should be doing okay so in this next picture you'll see that the bow grip doesn't really doesn't really look all that good I mean the fingers are all kind of smushed in like this so that's really not a very good bow grip but the point is about the angle of the bow as it's crossing the strings so let me see what he says here a front view of the entire position note the turn of the violin to the left now this is what the point he's making in this picture He's making this point right here. Listen to what he says. Note the turn of the violin to the left. So it's not out in front or it's, you know, not down. It's out to the left. And that's good advice. The downward tilt of its right rim. Okay, so what he's saying here is that it doesn't lay completely flat like this and we know that right it tilts down this way okay so that that is the point of this picture <laughs> which I find rather ironic now the horizontal direction of the strings horizontal okay so that would be horizontal direction of the strings good the left elbow is thrust in front of the breast as required to enable the fingers to govern the tones in the first position. Well, govern your tones, for goodness sake. So what he's saying is that the elbow is under far enough to make sure that the tips of the fingers can reach the strings and make, you know, make their pitches correctly. All right, moving on to these two pictures. Let's see what DeBerio has to say. Correct position of the thumb. Okay, so he's showing us the thumb and, and fingers in the first position. And really, I don't really like it. <laughs> uh, but let's see. Correct position of the thumb and first fingers in fourth position. So, so let's take away what, what this pair of pictures is showing us, okay? The thumb here is actually a little bit bent, which I don't advocate, and it's a little bit forward from the first finger. Now you could play just perfectly fine with your thumb like that, okay? But I would suggest more of a straight thumb on your violin. And then here, he's telling you, the point is when you're in fourth position, to get that thumb under the neck of the violin, right here at the curl, right in that curve, and that's good, good advice whether your thumb is like this or like this. Okay, so I'm going to finish up before we start playing in this book with a little talk about the musical terms employed in this work and what that means basically is the musical terms that I use in this book. Okay, and he is talking about um, the adagio, this is tempo markings basically andante, andantino, allegretto, uh, allegro, animato, brillante. So, uh, tempo and also um, uh, 
attitude, you know, the feeling of the piece. So, um, cantabile, a singing kind of quality to it. And also, um, words like, um, well, even forte is in this list, and largamente is in a broad manner, meaning broad strokes, broad kind of tempo. So, you might see one or two of these terms paired up. But these are very handy to make sure you understand them. It's very handy to read through, go through it, make sure you understand these terms, and keep it as a reference point in case you don't. Um, but anytime you see pictures like this, in, hand drawn in the beginning of one of the old etude books or exercise books, uh, take it with a grain of salt. You know, look, read, and try to get what the point is because a lot of times the drawings aren't really good, that good. So if you could please get your copy of this book, if you don't have it yet, uh, you can get it in the description from a link to download. And we're going to look at the first lesson. Now let's see what DiBerio has to say. The first difficulty experienced in the employment of the bow is to avoid a scraping sound produced by the weight of the wrist on the strings more especially in the upstroke when the hand approaches the violin. This is corrected by utilizing only a small quantity of the hair, conducting the bow with uniform pressure, both in the down and in the upstroke, and by inclining it slightly toward the fingerboard. Okay, are you asleep yet? <laughs> Let me finish and I'm going to cipher this out for you. A pause should be observed after each note so that the teacher may correct the position of the arm, the wrist, and the fingers. Okay, so the point is, <clears throat> when we start reading these notes and playing, we want to make a good sound. And we don't want to press too hard, right? We want to... Uh, be careful not and he says the wrist on the strings but the wrist never even gets near the strings but the wrist may you know the wrist action may have some effect on what the bow does um, and so he does mention something really good and that is that the hair the 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 use of the bow hair should be uniform meaning uh, it should be the same no matter where you are in the bow and that will get you a good as far as pressure, both down and up bow, with uniform pressure, uh, that will get you a good tone. So um, I have said this before, and I work a lot on tone with beginning students. Weight, speed, and contact point are the three elements of beautiful tone, and they must remain constant from frog to tip for the best possible tone. Okay, so let's read. If you would get yours out, I just want to kind of scan the music and look at the first exercise, bowing on the open strings. Now what I find a little bit probably not uh, as easy is that he starts us out on the G string. So I'll just point, to you, point you to this G string if you look at that and you'll see that if this looks like mumbo jumbo to you, let's explain it a little bit. First, let's just look at this line. All right, so you see we go left to right, just like in reading a book. And you can ignore everything until you get to that first note, and that's G. So let's look. You've got G, and then you've got G, and the whole line is full of G's. Well, oh, there's another note. That's not G, is it? So G is a signature. It has two ledger lines um, under the staff. This five line group here is a staff and we put the notes on the staff and everything else we want you to read. So okay we've got four G's here and then he switches to a D. D sits and clings uh, right to the staff right on the bottom. Okay so there's four D's. So if you look at that first line we have four G's, and also he puts zeros under. So that's telling you open string. Okay, so if you would look at that anywhere else on the page, would you find another G maybe? How about there? 
Okay, so there's lots of G's on this page, so remember what G looks like. It's just like you looking at your mom, okay? You know what your mom looks like. If she was in a crowd at the mall, you would spot her right away. You would know her because of what she looks like, and it's the same. This is always G, always, and this is always D. And we have a few other kind of symbols on here, and he didn't cover these, I don't think. He may have in the prelim. But we're going to just real quick tell you, this is a rest for one beat, and this is a fermata, which means, uh, fermata is spelled, by the way, F-E-R-M-A-T-A, and it is a hold. So he puts a hold over the rest. Whatever that, it's sometimes called a bird's eye, too. Whatever that bird's eye is sitting on top of is what we hold for an indeterminate amount of time. And remember in the instructions, he said at the end to stop after each note so that the teacher can ch fix your bow and your wrist and so forth. So basically, I'm the teacher, and I can't check your bow or your wrist and your fingers. I'm just going to play this, and you can play along with me. And we're going to learn how to read those notes. Okay. So very slowly, and we're going to give uh, the fermatas, let's agree because we can't just both be guessing at it. Uh, we'll give them one beat because the rest is one beat, and we'll go kind of slow. So one other thing before we, go, we do this, and that is that the G is colored in, the, the ball at the bottom, the little circular part is called the head, and it is colored in and it has a stem so it is a quarter note so any notes that we see with that are a quarter note with the same kind of qual characteristics will get one beat so if you look at line one you'll see G's that are quarter notes you'll see D's open D's that are quarter notes and you'll see uh, the squiggly lines which are quarter rests Okay, that's three things you learned about reading today already. So, probably more because we've got fermata too, right? Now, if you look over that first note, that first G, you notice that uh, DeBerio has put a down bow marking. And on the next one, he has put an up bow marking. So, refer to your terms in the, the previous pages, and you'll see what those symbols are. Down bows and up bows, and he, well, and most of the time, I would say, when the editor or the com the composer puts a bowing in like that at the beginning, but not on every other note, he usually means do it like this every time. Okay, so and that's what we're gonna do. But don't worry too much about bowing right now. I just want you to play four G's in a row with a rest in between each one, because that's what the music's telling us to do. Okay, let's try it. G string. Here we go. All the way over here. All right. Ready, play. Stop on the string. Wait. Ready, play. Stop. Ready, play. Ready, play. Good, so if I say ready, play, then we'll all be together. All right, then let's move to the D now. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. All right, so what I want you to do is look at the music while we're doing this so that you will kind of register what we're doing. If you look at line two, you'll see it's a continuation and it has uh, notes that are different, right? So he gave us the D and the G string. Now the A string is right here in the middle of the staff. In fact, on the second space from the bottom and the E string is on the top space. So if you could just review these two lines, you would know what the open strings are, and you could probably get a long way in this book. 
Okay, so let's see if we could do that before we finish up today. We're going to start back to the beginning, and I just wanted to, as I was, before I began, I just remembered one other thing that I wanted to tell you that was probably a good idea about what he was saying. Uh, he was talking about the weight of the wrist and getting a bad sound on the, on the string. So he said, this is corrected by utilizing only a small quantity of the hair and conducting the bow, meaning moving the bow with uniform pressure, both down and up, okay, and inclining it slightly toward the fingerboard. And that's what I wanted to tell you. If you would look at where my bow is and see how I'm kind of inclining it a little bit toward the fingerboard. Now the hand is not rolling over, okay? I am just pushing a little bit with the fingers. Not rolling over, just pushing with the fingers a little bit. And you really don't need, because I've got a lot of weight in the bow here, you don't need a half of that weight. But that gives you some weight in the bow if you move the, if you move the stick a little bit toward the fingerboard. Not too much, okay? <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're going to play the first two lines. And I'm going to say ready, play, in between. Okay, and when we switch uh, notes, I will call out the note so you'll remember. But look at the, look at the page uh, before we play it, okay? So here we go. G string, ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. D string. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. A string. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. E string. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. All right, we just played the first two lines. Did you, were you able to follow along? What, do you read music already? Was this hard? Let me know, because we're going to go all the way through this book. Okay, so practice it up, because the next long, couple lines is the same kind of thing. So see you in the next version of DeBerio's Reading Method. I hope that you reviewed what we did in the first video, and that you know kind of all the little things that we talked about in terms of what the symbols mean. Uh, and so we'll expand on that now, and we're looking at page one, the first exercise. If you don't have it, you can download it in the description. But you'll notice this, the third and fourth line, we're dealing with a different um, configuration of uh, the open strings. Now, we still have to deal with the staff and the symbols of a quarter rest and a fermata, so you can refer to the previous video for the, me for the uh, meanings and dis discussion about what those things mean. But if you'll look now, you'll see that we're starting with E strings, and they are quarter notes with quarter note rests, and fermatas that follow. These are A's. Then we're going to come back to this line and do D's, and now we're going to do G's. Okay. Now, it, let's look at one other thing. And you'll see some of the ends of the lines have one bar, and some of them have two bars. So if they have two bars, that means you have reached the end of the exercise. If it has one bar, like this, then it means you have another line to play. Right? So when we start, we're going to start here with the treble clef. You see that? Violin is a treble clef instrument, by the way. The C is telling us the time signature. We'll get more into that, but it means 4-4 four, four time, same thing, 4 beats per measure. And if, if the quarter note that looks like this gets one beat, 
and if the uh, quarter rest gets one beat, then we can count the beats. There's one, two, three, four, and then there's a measure line, which is the complete measure. So the four, four time, or the common time, that's why they write a C to make it easier, is telling us there are four quarter beats per measure. And so the measure is blocked off by the line. See that line each time? So now you know what a measure is. And you know where the end of the piece will occur. And if you just scan the ending, you'll see there's a two-line exercise here. And then one line exercise on the next three lines. So if we counted the complete exercises, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six in total on this page. All right, so remember the quarter note gets one beat. That's just one bow stroke. And we're going to start in line three. One, two, three. So get this in front of you and let's start it. I will say ready play and I'll call out what string too. Hopefully you'll be watching the music and you'll know what string you're playing and because of looking at the staff. Remember the locations of the string on the, the note on the staff. If you can picture the staff in your mind, it has five lines and four spaces. And the E is on the top space, and the A is on the second from the bottom space. And the D clings to the bottom of the staff, so it's just under the staff. And the G is well down in the basement with two ledger lines above it. So it's really, really low note. In fact, the lowest note you can play on your violin is the G. All right, now back to the uh, third line on the first lesson. And remember, we're going to try to get a nice even sound by inclining our bow a little bit toward the, the uh, fingerboard. And here we go with E string. Here's my A, by the way. Okay, here we go. E string, ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. A string. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. Next line, D string, ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. G string. Ready, play. Ready, play. Ready, play. And you'll see the double bar at the end. Now, a lot of times when we're beginning to read music, we often have a hard time like getting it all together. We're playing, the violin is new, we heard a weird sound on the bow, so our eyes leave the page. That's really not a, a good idea, okay? When you're reading, you're not working on tone, okay? You're not fixing your position, okay? Um, you're just trying to learn what those notes are. So make sure that while even though we're reading notes and learning how to read, that you're still taking time, of course, to practice your tone, looking at your bow away from the music, memorizing, and you're going to be able to cover both sides, both sides of the brain at work here. One side reads music, the other side plays it. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed. DeBerio's reading lesson and we'll have more so make sure you get those pages printed and we'll see you soon.
I'm glad you're here today. Now this is a continuation on the DeBerio reading method. And so far we've covered the first four lines of lesson one. So make sure you review those. Maybe go back and check them out. You can download the book and print it off uh, in a link in the description. And we're going to continue now in line five. Line five. And this time we're going to have an extra challenge. If you'll just look at line five for a second. So if you will scan that line, you're going to see that now we go G, rest, that's a rest, quarter squiggly line rest, quarter rest, then D. All right, so we're not playing four G's in a row now. You've got to be alert because music is always, when you're reading, it is never what you expect it to be when you're sight reading. So let's talk about how we can pre best prepare for uh, reading and playing this line and the next line because we're going to go all the way through it this time. If you look at the end of this line, you'll see there's only one bar. So we have to continue the piece until the end of the when we get to the double bar. So you'll see that Deberio is moving very quickly here, and that's why this book is, you know, good for uh, for YouTube. Um, but you should probably find some other reading material that will give you practice on reading and playing with the same level of difficulty, because this is going to get more difficult quickly. So here we are, and let's just kind of review. We've got our treble clef, which tells us that we are in violin playing mode, a C which says common time, four beats per measure, four quarter beats per measure, and then we first uh, have a G, rest, D, rest, and it would be really good for you to look at this and do just that. G, rest, D, rest, and make your eyes go through it and say it, say the name of the note, and then try to play it. So that's a good way to prepare for these videos. Okay, and um, you'll see as you as you as your eyes go toward the right that we're going to have A's and E's going back and forth. Then we're going to go back to the D's and the G's again. So here we go. All right, I'm going to call them out. But pretty soon. After we get kind of the basics, I'm not going to call them out anymore. So I'm hope that, hoping that you can maybe review these at home when without the video. Okay, so starting on line five, we are going to go, ready, play, G, rest, D, rest, G, rest, D, rest, D. Rest A, rest D, rest A, rest A, rest E, rest A, rest E, rest E. We're down at the second line now. A, rest E, rest A, rest A. Rest D. Rest A. Rest D. Rest D. Rest G. Rest D. Rest G. All right, so just kind of feeling our way through here, guys. Um, because I have to say rest and the name of the note, we really aren't getting a true four beats per measure. We're getting one extra. So I'd like to try to um, do it without calling out the notes. All right, wonder if you can play along with me. I'll say ready, go. Don't forget the rests in between each note. Ready, play. <laughs>
let's have you go back and try that again with me and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to learn what half notes are. I'm so excited because we get to find out what these notes that aren't colored in anymore are. They are half notes. And if you will also look, we see a corresponding rest, which is a half rest. And it's like a little block, a little brick sitting on the middle line of the staff. That's worth two beats. So let's do the math. Four quarter beats per measure. If we get a half note, that's two beats and a half note rest with it, which is two beats then we have four altogether so half notes are going to be twice as long as quarter notes the quarter notes as you recall are the ones that we played in the previous lines which are colored in and have a stem and these notes are not colored in but they do have a stem and these are half notes no matter who plays them on what instrument, they're always half notes, okay? And no matter what G looks like, whether he's colored in, whether he has a stem, whether he is not colored in, he is always located with two ledger lines bumping up against those two ledger lines, and he is always G, no matter what he looks like. So you can think about that as, like I said, recognizing your mom in the mall or you could also think about what mom is wearing whether she's wearing a hat or whether she's wearing uh, skinny jeans or whether she is wearing uh, high heels or not okay guys let's try these half notes so two beats gonna be one two so what's that mean our bow's gonna move slower a little slower Let's try some G's half notes. And this is what you should be thinking. Half note. Then you'll get two beats on your half note. Now, as I play a G this time, think half note, but I'm not going to say it. All right, so do you feel two beats in the G as I play it? So now let's scan this line. Notice that uh, as we scan this line, at the end there's a double bar. So we will play one line and stop. All the notes, if you'll scan the line with your eye, all the notes are, are used in this line. We have a G, we have a D, A, E, E. So it'd be good for you if you would just scan the line and name the notes so you know what you're going to do ahead of time. And then also, let's see, we have two beats rest after the notes. So we're going to go, hmm, rest, rest, hmm, rest, rest. So that's going to be the, the form of what we do here. One line only. Let's give it a go. Remember, it was a little awkward because I had to call the notes out. So I'm not going to do that from now on. I'm just going to... Play it and let's see what you get. Okay, here we go. Starting with G. Here's my A, by the way. All right, here we go on our line, the first line, the third line from the bottom, the first one with half notes in it. Half notes, ready, go. How did you do? Uh, one thing I did notice, and of course this, the most simple piece or exercise or etude or 
line of music, Miss Diane is going to find some technique to teach you. And this one has a very important technique. So as you're playing your half notes, you notice that we're using all the strings. And because of that, we're crossing strings. So during the two beat rest, you should be preparing your bow. So you first play the G, two beats rest, but get that string crossing over with. Don't wait to the last minute. Cross, wait. Cross, wait. Cross, wait. And so forth. Also, did you notice the bow never leaves the string? Okay? You don't pick your bow up and reset it. You stay on the, bow, the string all the way through the exercise. Stay on the string and cross. Stay on the string and cross. Alright, so practice that as we continue. Now we're going to do the last two lines, and it looks like we have the same... Oh, I see some new stuff. Okay, we're going we're gonna to do this. Let's do the next very next line now and um, it's got the same kind of format half notes two beats half qu quarter I mean half rests two beats All right remember that technique as we go here we go bows on the string ready go <laughs> So, new stuff in there, right? So, wow. that You know, the technique is moving so fast. What was, what was the new challenge in this thing, in this line? You know? Of course you do. If you played it, you had to cross over a string. And that can be a noisy mess if you're not careful. Alright? The very first one. Crossing over D silently. Going to the A, then we did, when we were on the D, we had to cross to the E silently. All right, practice that. You do that all the time in violin. Okay, let's go ahead and do the very last line. And look what we have. No more rests. Uh-oh. So, we also have, it's sort of like everything we've learned so far. Uh, we have all the notes, we have all the string crossings. Tell you what, let's stop a little tiny bit between the half notes, just to get the bow ready, okay? And uh, because if you look at the first two notes of the last line, what we have is G and then E. And there's two strings between G and E, so we really need to be silently crossing over there, and we have no rests in order to do that. Alright, here we go guys. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> simple little exercise that has a lot to teach you. So we're not only learning to read music, but we are learning some technique along the way, and that's great. I hope you appreciate it and enjoy it, too. All right, if you do, give me a thumbs up. I sure appreciate it.